Hi, this is Lori with uh, Time to Be Creative, and today I'm going to start a uh, video series on building a journal, scrapbook album, mini album, whatever you'd like to call it. I have a few su subscribers who have asked how I built uh, this book. I did this a few years ago. It's uh, with a Graphic 45 French Country paper and so I'm going to show you how I did this it won't be exactly the same um, but the same idea same concept and the same way that I put the book together uh, this time I'm going to use a smaller paper palette uh, from graphic 45 it's called seasons so I do have a two to not a tutorial I have a flip through of this on my um, I have two YouTube accounts and on my time to be creative account you'll see the flip through of this book uh, I'm now trying to put all of my videos on my pink girly YouTube account uh, apparently if you have two accounts you can't combine them easily or at all so well that's a that's a, that's a long story so let's just say I have two accounts you can find me either at time to be creative or paint girly and um, today I'm going to start building uh, a book using graphic 45 seasons and this is the tablet of paper that I had in my stash it's just an 8 by 8 and um, I love graphic 45 paper it's very nice to work with and the images are just beautiful and so I'm going to be using envelopes to create my pages and I'm um, just going to go over supply lists. Now you can use any paper that you might have in your stash or if you'd like to purchase something new um, you can certainly do that but this is what I have and this is what I'm going to use for this project. And so I have a little supply list here. I'm hoping that you can see that well enough. And you're going to need some envelopes to follow this um, technique of building a book. Your paper palette, paper uh, pad that you like. Uh, black card stock. Now, if you um, would prefer to use something different. Now, the envelopes I have were given to me by a friend, and they're white. Um, I don't really want white envelopes. Um, I like to build my books on black card stock. So, <clears throat> if you're going to purchase envelopes or if you have envelopes in your stash that you can use and they're black or a color that works with your paper or your project, by all means, go ahead and use those. But I'll, I'll show you how I'm going to adapt my white envelopes to work with the book that I'm making. And I like to have 65-pound um, card stock, and I also like to have the 110 to use with my, for my photo mats to slip into the pockets. Um, you don't need the 110. If you have it, great. If you want to get it, fine. Um, you can use the 65, certainly. But um, my personal preference is I like to use the 110. Uh, a paper trimmer is very handy. A paper a scoreboard. Um, it's very um, really good to have if you if you can have one um, if you don't have one I'll show you how I can use you can use your paper trimmer to score lines as well you'll need some glue I like to use Mod Podge I also use the dry paper glue tape and score tape and you'll need some chipboard or some um, lightweight cardboard to make the cover of our book and a few things that are optional, I like to ink the edges of my pages. Not everybody's into that look. So that would be um, a personal preference. But if you do like that look, you'll need an ink pad and an inker. Um, I also like to use some punches and maybe some stamps. I have embellishments, magnets, different things like that to help... Um, just personalize and um, give your book some character but there are certainly optional you don't need those to to build a book 
And of course, having a ruler and a pair of scissors handy um, is always a good thing. So like I said, I'm going to use the uh, Graphic 45 Seasons um, paper pad. Now I've taken a lot of pages out of this because I've been doing some prep work for the video. So, uh, just quickly, I think I left enough pages in here for you to, to get an idea of what this um, tablet looks like. Let's just see if I, if that's, um, try not to get a glare on this for you. So it's spring, summer, um, autumn, and winter, and this is the spring page. Graphic 45 paper is double-sided, so you have this beautiful flower floral print on the back. And then with this um, tablet, you get little tags and cards that you can cut out for each season. And then, of course, uh, that has a back side as well. Now, I decided... Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. And um, so that's springtime. And then they have their summer with the um, sunflowers and summer flowers. And then this floral design on the back of summer. And again, the little cards that can be cut out and things that can be used to uh, decorate the book. And then on the back of that one is this beautiful orange with the uh, muted colored flowers. I just love that. And then we have autumn. All basically laid out the same. And then the back of the autumn paper is um, pumpkins and birds and your sunflowers. And then your cutouts for autumn. And I think you get three of each sheet. This is the winter. And then this, another floral design on the back. And it's got um, pine cones, little birds, oranges. Very pretty. And then, of course, the cards that go with the winter theme. And then on the back of this is a striped blue paper. So that's what I'm working with. And like I said, the envelopes that I'm using were given to me. A friend had a bunch of these envelopes that um, she wasn't going to use. So I thought, well, let me use these for pages of a book. So what I did was I cut, the, cut it down to the size. I just randomly cut. I should have measured and probably done a more specific size. But when you get your envelope, you're going to decide what size book you want to make, what size pages you're going to want to work with. So I took off the sealed end of the envelope and then I just randomly it ended up being my this envelope is seven and um, I think an eighth by seven. So not that I need another page but then I just you just cut where you want, depending on the envelope you're using and what size you want. And so what this does is it makes like a tube, really. But we're going to attach this to our spine. This will be our pocket. And then we'll decorate these pages. So I decided to have six pages in my book. So you want to decide how many pages the size of your envelopes that you're going to use. Cut off both ends so you have that pocket. Others have other videos that I've watched recommend um, that you um, use even pages. So I decided on six pages for this book. 
you want to be careful because um, if your book gets too many pages, then you're, you you got to consider your spine's going to be very wide and your book's going to be very large. Um, this is kind of a square surface, not quite square. Um, so it'll be a nice area to decorate and to do things with. And it's just kind of different from what I've done before. So I just decided on, on the square. But like I said originally, I'm not crazy about the white. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to overcome that. So then the, the next thing I would suggest that you do is that you um, decide what paper you want to use for your cover because then you want to make sure you don't use those. Now, if you have a couple tablets of paper that you're using, you've got plenty of paper that may not be a concern for you, but I'm limited to this one tablet of eight by eight paper. So I wanted to make sure that I had something set aside. So I decided to go with this um, printed green in, the, uh, in this paper tablet that I'm going to use for my cover. And I will cover the binding with um, black paper and then I'll use to, this to incorporate the theme of the book and then I'll embellish on top of this um, to decorate my book. All right. So then what I did was I went through and I laid out my pages and decided what I was going to, to do to make sure I have enough paper and to kind of get an idea of what direction I was going to go. And so that's what I have here for you to look at. Now I use some post-it notes and make some notes and went through and decided how I'm going to lay out my paper. So these are my envelopes that I cut down. You see I have the little, we'll make the little pocket there. And then I went ahead and I measured and I cut what I needed for my book. I think I have my book backwards. I want this side up. So this is going to be, I'm going to have my front cover here and then my first page. And so I decided to trim off some of the design for the spring, summer, and fall pages. They're all basically the same. I cut out my black... 65 pound cardstock to fit right on my envelope. Now for me to do measurements, if you want to know what measurements I use, just you can message me and, and I'll tell you, but um, I think this is seven and an eighth by seven. Uh, but if you use a different envelope, your measurements are going to be different. So you need to, to measure according to your project. And like I said, I didn't want the white. I like to work on the black surface. So that's going to get glued down. And then I measured a smaller size of the paper pad. And that will get glued on there. Now when I do that and I, I glue this together, there's a chance that you're going to see white. So I inked the edges of my envelope. I don't know if you can see that. If I hold it this way, maybe you can see. I inked all four edges. Okay. And I just pick up this stuff, Studio G. And what I like about this, it's inexpensive. It gives you a really nice coverage and it's like a sponge. So I don't need an applicator. So all I do is I just have to run that across the edge of the paper. And that will take away the white starkness because I don't like it. That may not bother you. And if you're going to use a white envelope, but I'll show you what I mean because I didn't ink them all. So I could show you what I mean. You can really see it. But see, when you when you glue your edges down, your paper down, 
and you look at that edge see to me that that's a, a glaring white line I don't want that so that's why I inked my edges and I'll I'll ink the rest of those I don't know that I need to do that on camera okay so then I'm gonna have my spring so I'm laying out my pages and I decided I'm going to put a corner pocket on this page. And then who knows what else will happen once we get going. And then I use the uh, matching paper for the opposite page. And then I decided I'm going to do some kind of a flip up page. So I, I want to plan ahead because if I just sit down and do this and I decide and I glue everything down and then I want to put a page that flips up here or flips out or an extra page in here and I've got everything glued down then I have to figure out how to hide raw edges so I'm trying to plan ahead and decide how I want my pages to lay out so that I can glue everything down that needs to be glued down I can hide magnets I can hide the raw edges of the pages that are going to flip so it's the same on the back side of this page. I used the summer. I trimmed it out. Now I'm going to ink these edges too, so I'll show you that as well. And then this was on the back of the um, cutouts. And I like the way the orange looked with that. And this one I decided I'm going to flip out a page to the right with a pocket on this main page none of this is set in stone then I decided I don't know what I want for the center so I may do a collage of all the four seasons I'll see what kind of paper I have left over and hopefully that's going to work out and you know won't be a nightmare so these are plain for right now then I have my autumn This one, uh, let's see, I'm going to do a small page on top, the right hand side, and then maybe a journal space on the main page. The other challenging part is once you write yourself notes, remembering what you meant when you wrote them. Ah. Then we have winter, and that's the coordinating paper there might do a flip down on this one or maybe a gate fold opening I don't know what I want to do quite yet then on the back page um, maybe a split pocket and then I'll have the back page of the inside cover book which I'll probably do some kind of belly band and I'm going to coordinate that with the front inside cover now the other issue for me when I'm using um, envelopes that um, are not the color that I want like the book the uh, French country book that I did I had black envelopes so that worked out really great but the other thing you have to consider is when you put your mat in and you open this up you're going to see this glaring white uh, on the inside of the pocket I don't like that either so I took some strips. I don't have quite enough. I have to cut a couple of more. So I cut a couple of strips of some of the leftover paper when I trimmed off for my pages of scraps. And I'm going to ink these edges. And they're going to slip in there. And that will look really nice instead of seeing that glaring white when you slide your uh, photo mat in and out. All right. And then I'm probably going to punch a little indentation here too because when I put my mats in, I have my cards, I have my 110 card stock. Now I've already pre cut these, so I'm you know prepared I decided to round my edges that's just for the punch and because I'm limited with how much paper I have from the uh, graphic 45 tablet I had some parchment paper in my stash so I just cut that that will be on one side now I can stamp on this I can 
uh, glue images on here from the paper pack. Um, I can leave it plain, put some lines for journaling. And um, then on the other side will be some of the paper from the pa palette. Now I just got to make sure I have the birds going the right way. And then I'll put a little tab on the end so that on the edge so that when this slides in you can easily pull it out. It'll look real cute. All right. So that's basically what we're going to do. Now I'm just going to show you a few things. I do have black paper cut out for here. I'm not ready to glue everything down yet. Like I said, I want to ink my edges. And for that, I'm going to use um, this uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink gathered twigs. This is a new um, color for me, a new ink for me. I generally use a, a vintage photo, which I absolutely love, but um, I see, saw a girl working on a project and she used the gathered twigs and I really liked um, the way that looked and the coloring of it. I'm into the vintage, antique looking kind of thing. So, I don't want to get this all over my work area. Now, the only thing I don't like about, I mean, this ink lasts quite a long time. So I purchased um, a set that had a lot of these small ones in it. So I have a lot of different colors because I also just um, purchased, um, they have the Distress inks and they also have Distress Oxides. Oh my gosh, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. I love those too. <clears throat> but I have a hard time, I have some arthritis in my hands, and I have a hard time opening up these little boxes. You probably will not have this much trouble. And I should have done this before I put the camera on, but I didn't remember. Now, the difference with this ink pad versus um, the Studio G, this is a more solid, pressed kind of material, and... Um, really doesn't ink edges or really on your on your surface um, like this little spongy one does so you're really better served to have um, some kind of a sponge applicator and um, these work these work pretty well and of course this is a Tim Holtz thing too um, they have the rectangle and they have this um, round and I'm just going to assume um, that some of you may not have experience doing some inking or even um, putting a scrapbook like this together. And so I'm going to just pretend like you don't know anything. So you want to ink your edges because that's a white surface and, and that really, once you start decorating your book, you'd be surprised how that's like glares and really sticks out. And so you just um, put a little bit of ink onto your little applicator and just rub around your edges and it's just going to take off that stark white and then what's recommended is when you're going to ink your um, edges around your surface you just come from off of the page in a circular motion now you can put as much of this on or as little and like I said earlier you may not um, even like to do this. You may like the brighter colors and not um, give it a vintage, old, worn kind of a look. All right. Now I'm going to try to do this tutorial and do it maybe in like four different videos so they're not too terribly long. But we'll just see how that goes um, because while I did a lot of prep work for this video now see I kind of got it really kind of dark there so if I 
decide I don't like that when I start putting the book together, I might just put something over top of that. So, no stress. See, that just kind of makes it look old and vintage. Now, you may like to keep this nice and bright on the inside, but you could also come in here and add a little color on the inside, too. Now, we might cover some of this up when we start decorating. I'm going to do underneath that ribbon. You could do some in your flowers. Whatever you like, whatever your taste is, um, let your creative side come out. See, now we're going to glue that down. But I'm not ready to do that yet because I'm not totally sure of 100% of what I'm going to do with my pages. So that will get glued onto here. So you won't see any of that white. Now I also want to then carry through that theme. These little uh, inside strips. Now for my book, um, I decided I wanted about an inch and a half in. And I'm going to do the same thing. And of course it measures seven inches, which will slip in my pocket very easily. And I don't know that I'm that terribly concerned. I mean, you can make yourself crazy with this stuff. But I'm not terribly concerned with, because all the paper works together. If you're familiar with graphic 45 paper at all, it's like, to me, it's like the bomb. It's like so, it's so great to work with. <clears throat> and a lot of their different um, palettes of paper work with each other. So I'm not too concerned that this, matches what's on this cover although you know maybe I should be but one thing I will tell you is um, dry tape is really nice to use but when you're trying to get it inside of a pocket like this if that sticks down with that tape you don't have any wiggle room you don't have any any um, extra time you like got to get it right and get it down so I'm going to use wet glue to put this inside. Now the other thing that I've done in the past, which is not a good thing, is say like I'll um, punch, uh, take a circle punch and do a little half circle um, so that my tab can be seen. Uh, I don't know if I did it for this book. Yeah, see, I don't know if you can see it here, see. I did like a little half circle punch. Well, if you do that too soon or you do that before you have your pages paper glued, um, then you have to eyeball that and line that up and it's it's annoying. And then you have to try to get it in the right spot where you want your, your tag to be on. So I'm kind of waiting on that too, but I'm going to definitely punch um, a little spot for my tabs to stick out. Uh, in this book as well. Now you don't have you don't have to do that. You may not like that, um, and you may not. I I purchased a while ago. It's um. I think it's discontinued. Um. I think they call them a whale's tail punch. Because that's what it looks like. It looks like a whale's tail. This one is um, discontinued, and it's a tab. And this is by, I think it's EK, EK Stamps. Love this punch. Um, so the way this looks is when you punch that, It just looks almost like a file folder tab. But you may not have something like this, and that's fine. You could use two circles. You could use two squares. You may have a little flower punch that you like. It doesn't have to be like this, but this punches out like this, and then you just fold it in half. And that, that would just go on the edge of your photo mat, and it 
you know, kind of sticks out like a file folder at the end of your page. Um, now, I've been doing some altered books um, journaling as well. And you can use a variety of things. You could use some old lace. You could use a piece of muslin. Um, you could use an, a, an old ticket. Just depends on the style of your book and what things you like. Um, you know, for this, I mean, really, for this spring page, you pick out something. You know, we could use a butterfly um, to make your tab. You're not limited. Whatever your imagination. Um, and if it's for you, if the book is for you, put things in there that you like. If it's for a gift and you're doing it for a friend or a family member, add some things that they like. I mean, maybe the person likes animals and likes dogs or cats. You, you could stamp out or go online and print out um, a paw. Or you could draw one, cut it out, and use a little, the little paws for um, the little edges of your pages but it is convenient to be able to have a little handle of sorts to then go ahead and grab your um, photo mat to pull it out all right so these kind of go with spring this is my spring page so what I'm going to do is now this is another tip I'm going to give you I like to use Mod Podge not for everything um, I find that it doesn't really dry completely um, if you're using it for an outside surface on a project. Say if you're decoupaging on a can or a wooden box or one of those cray paper uh, boxes. Um, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to dry real well for me. But I love it for scrapbooking because it's not as liquidy or doesn't have as much water content, I don't think, as, say, White Glow or Elmer's Glow. And so when I use it, I don't really get any kind of a ripple. So I just absolutely love it. And whatever you use it for, I mean, it really stays in place. Uh, some folks like to use, um, oh, what do they call that stick glow, uh, glue stick. I haven't found one that really sticks uh, well enough for me. Now, a lot of my things that I make, uh, I have, I'm in a co-op and I sell my my things. So I don't want to sell something that's going to fall apart. So I stay away from a glue stick. So I use um, Mod Podge and I use the dry tape. I'll show you probably at some point the dry tape in the run runner. I think they call it an ATG gun or whatever. And score tape, of course, I use that for building the book and the spine and stuff because that's really strong and will hold your book together. Anyway, so what I do is I like to use these little needle nose um, bottles because you can get a real thin bead of glue on your project. Now hopefully this isn't clogged. That's the only trouble with these because sometimes it clogs and of course this one looks like it's clogged and then I need to find something I can clear that that um, let's see if this will work. Clear that and just use a little these come with a little cap, but I, my cap fell apart, or so I'm just gonna. Sometimes the glue gets just gets a little dried up in that little nozzle, and this is real grungy. I should have cleaned this off. I apologize, but I am a messy crafter. All right, so I'm going to put a little bead of glue just around the outside edges. I'm going to get as close to the edge as I can. And then I'm going to slide this in the pocket. And then when I decide to put my punch opening where I want, I'll just punch right through this, and then I'll go back and ink my edge. 
So this can be a little bit fiddly, but like I said, with the Mod Podge, you've got some wiggle room and some time where if you use the dry tape, don't mind me, I just wipe it on my hand and then I clean it off later. So you don't, you want to make sure that's down in there pretty well. I've got a little bit of an edge, I might have to trim that. I'm busy talking. So you just want to go in there and try to just smoosh it down. Okay. Just make sure you get a good stick. Now see I'm a little bit over here. That will that will bother me, so I'll trim that off. Then I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side. And like I said, when you're doing your own project, your own size envelopes, you just measure what will fit inside your envelope. And uh, if you're using, like I said, a black envelope or some or gray or a t uh, you know a tan color, you won't need to do this unless you like the way it looks, and then you can do it. And the uh, Mod Podge seems to like stick pretty quickly, so that's why I got off on that one end. So just slip it down. And you've got that done. And then when that dries real well, I'll, like I said, I'll trim that off. And that'll be, you know, that won't be too hard because I don't have the, the page attached to the spine yet. I decided to do all this kind of work before I put the pages on the spine so that I can mess around with it um, a little easier. Now I'm just going to show you because this first page my spring page I'm not going to do I decided to do all my flip ups and fold outs and all that jazz on the pages that are not um, that are the plain pattern so I'm going to go ahead and get this glued down and then I'm going to glue it onto my page so that's when I'm going to use my um, tape runner. This is not the best thing to do because then these kind of rust. But like I said, I flipped my lid, lost it, and I have no idea where it is. All right, so uh, they have a lot of different brands in these, and they have different sizes. This is um, I have a quarter inch, and I have the uh, half inch. I, I don't have any tape for my um, quarter inch. <clears throat> and um, you just refill it as, as you need to. And it, it's just like it's got this little trigger and you press, drag as you're pulling the trigger and then just lift up and it dispenses glue. And it's double sided. And I would recommend working on a surface where it doesn't stick. This is my little work mat that's nothing supposed to stick to. You want to get as close to the edge as you can. And you just run your tape down. I'm pressing, I'm pulling the trigger, and then I release the trigger and just pull up. Now this stuff, like I said, is great, but you have no wiggle room, no time. Once it's down, it is down. And if you don't get real close to the edge, sometimes you can put a little white glue in there or go back over and do the edge. The other thing um, with this kind of glue is, this is a little gross, it's kind of like that booger glue that, you know, stuff comes in the mail and you can rub it off. So if you get some on the outside edge, you really just rub it with your finger and you can get rid of it real easy. Now, for my project, I have to be careful because this isn't square, I want to make sure 
see because that's a perfect fit there because I you know measured it right but if I put it on this way it doesn't work and then and I put this on then I'm in trouble I want to make sure I have everything lined up correctly so that my words are the way they are supposed to be so I just I eyeball everything I don't measure and make myself crazy it's, these are handmade things and I just I don't do numbers very well and I don't measure very well and I'm just going to take my bone folder and just give that a good press to make sure that I've got a good stick okay now that's ready to put on my page Now, before I do that, I want to trim this little edge off. Because it'll just be easier. Okay. And I'm going to use the dry glue tape again to tape that on. So same process. You can see that a little better. Even though it's on the black, you can see the shiny surface where the glue is adhered. Now, I like to um, kind of tap down my, my top edge first and line it up. And then do down the side you'll find your own way and then you want to make sure again you get a good stick so that's going to be our first page and then we'll decorate or put a pocket on here do something See, and then that opens up, and we'll be able to slide in our mat. Now, I didn't um, cut all my pages because I wanted to show you those images in the tablet. And like I said, I didn't have, um, I just had the one small tablet of paper, so I used parchment paper. I cut this mat, this is um, what I cut out of the 110 cardstock, and that will slide in like that. And it fits both ways, but I want to make sure I have enough. It's a little tighter that way. But I want to make sure that once I put this on my spine, you know, I'm not going to have a lot hanging out the end. So I think I want it this way. Well, you know what? A good measure. So I'm six and three quarters this way. And, um, no. Yeah, six and seven eighths this way. So I think that's good. 
Now, same process. I don't want this to be plain. I want to ink my edge so that it matches the rest of the book. And those little ones are really stinkers to get open. Now I'll worry about, not worry, I'll decide what I'm going to do to decorate maybe this mat. Now this could just have a big photo on it or a couple photos and and you could journal on it. Um, but I do want to ink my edges. If I decide that it's going to be a journaling page, you know, I can address that later. It's not crucial. And I don't always do everything in the same order, the same fashion. It's just whatever comes to my mind and I just do it. So I'm going to attach this to this side. And then I think I want... Um, I have one sheet of my spring paper. So I'm going to use this. Now, I made a template so I can remember what sizes I need. So, for the topper of my mat, I need six and a half by six and a quarter. So, I'm going to get my paper trimmer. And on my trimmer, I like my paper trimmer, but the joint is is right here in an inconvenient spot so i'm going to measure four and a quarter uh six and a quarter which is right here now i have to think about this because i want to make sure my flowers are going in the right direction so this is my long side yeah so I want this six and a half on this side so I have to turn it this way and I want to do my first cut for six and a quarter so I'm going to go this way And then because my six and a half is in a spot where I really can't see it, I'm just going to take, this is eight inch paper, I'm just going to take my inch and a half off of here. And then I'm going to take off my little top that attaches to the tablet. And I, I'm probably not really in screen there, but I'm sure you've all used a paper trimmer. And then I'm going to round my edges. And this is one of my favorite tools. This is by Memory Keepers, I believe. And I'm sure you can get them from all different companies. But I absolutely love my corner trimmer. And then again, I'm going to ink my edges real quick. And then I'm going to do around the outside edge like we did the front of our page. Now you don't have to do this. You could really make this like a regular photo mat. You could put um, the corners in where page where if pictures could be slipped in you can cut slots where you can slip in uh, photographs that's upside down but I like it like this 
So, and this is like the other book that I made. So, I'm really trying to stay a little true to what I did before uh, in that other project. Oh, goodness. I hope you're not seeing. I just clicked something on my computer. Huh. All right, so I'm going to use my tape runner again. Now, I'm trying to not get myself twisted around and make sure I have this on the right way. And you can buy little tiny um, tape runners. You know, some of them are refillable, some of them aren't. I think they're a little on the pricey side and if you do a lot of um, this kind of work you know you may want to invest in the tape runner plus at AC Moore Michaels Joanne Fabrics see it there I'm just rubbing off a little bit of glue that was outside the line um, you can use the coupon and, and get them for a pretty good price And that's going to go there. And that's the way I want my flowers. This way. I'm just going to eyeball it down now you can use um, the Mod Podge if you want um, that, that would not be a problem so there's our mat and then I pre-cut with some of the scraps these little tabs um, to go on the edge of our um, mats so I'm just trying to see which ones I think I might like here. This one's got purple in it. And so I'm just going to fold this in half. And I'm going to want to attach that. And I'm going to ink the edges of this as well. Because I love it. So I'm just going to show you um, this one page. And then off camera I will put the rest of this together. And the next video... I think we'll start um, addressing the right hand side of the book and um, you know doing those flip ups and pull out pages and whatnot. So now I have my page. I just did the one side spring. Now this is what I have to be careful of because this is going to be the inside front cover. See, I would have attached that. And so my mat is going to go in on this side. So my little handle has to be over here. So I'm going to punch here. I generally just use a regular round circle punch. You can use any size that you might like. Uh, let's see. I know it's in here somewhere. this is probably a half inch punch so I'm just gonna come in here open my page and 
and just decide where I want that punch. Now this one's been sticking on me, but it's behaving. So just do like a little half moon punch. Now you see, I put my, <laughs> mistake number one, I put my um, little decoration on the wrong, the wrong side because I wasn't thinking about that. So now I have to come back in here and redo that. So I'll do that off camera as well. So then what I like to do is I like to slip in my mat. Right to the edge. And then I'll put a little pencil mark. A real light little pencil mark so I know where I want my tab. And that's going to go right there. And then I'll use my wet, the wet glue for this. And then I want that to be able to stick together. So I'll put a little bit there and then on both sides. Well, at least my flowers are going in the right direction. That's one plus. And I'll have to get some more of my scraps and um oh, bummer. It's really not a big deal, but I hate to waste paper, especially graphic 45 paper. So this is how this will go. And that's the first page. Now the adjoining page, I'm going to do some kind of a flip up, but I don't want each individual video to be too long. So I'm going to say uh, goodbye for today. And I'll see you in part two as we continue to build the Graphic 45 mini album with a paper palette called Seasons. Thanks for watching. Oh, and if you remember and if you found this interesting, give me a thumbs up. Thanks. See you next time. Bye-bye.